Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is Chapter 10 AP Physics, and we're doing a problem that uh, we would use conservation of energy, and uh, we've got a lot of letters, and so sometimes this happens where we have to put things in terms of letters rather than plugging in numbers. And so uh, we got a lot of diversity here. We've got a, a dangling mass that's connected to a string. That string wraps around a non-uniform pulley of, uh, you know, just has its own little variable for rotational inertia, so we're not going to be using one of our standard shape formula. They do give us the radius, which I think we might need that. And then we have a hollow sphere instead of a solid sphere, and that has a mass of capital M and capital R. And so we're wanting to find the VF in terms of all these different letters and the acceleration of gravity here on our, on our planets or any planet, right? So um, this is all going to descend as a system, and so as the mass descends, the, uh, uh, the disk adopts the angular velocity that's associated with the veloc tangential velocity of that string, and then we have the string wrapping around the equator of this hollow sphere. So we're going to be able to relate all those. We want to find Vf, right? But since these are rotational things, we're going to need to use the relating linear to angular um, to put that together. So, you know, if this thing um, is going to descend this distance h here, and we want to know how fast the mass is moving or the string itself is moving that Vf, that's we're going to use conservation of energy. So the, pos the, the pictured position is going to be our position 1. And then what's not pictured is going to be our position two. And we build from there. And let me just switch a page here so we have a little bit more real estate. Same picture, smaller. Ta-da. OK. And so when it's down here, that's when it's going to have this final velocity. So again, conservation of energy. That's the nicest way to tell folks what you're doing. And um, that's where our VF term is going to show up on that side of the equation. And so initially, the only type of energy involved, this thing is starts at rest, and so there's no kinetic energy. It's just the gravitational potential energy associated with that mass. And even though it's a little unclear there, we'll just treat that mass as a point mass. That's a distance h above where it ends up. Right? And that's, that actually works. So, uh, so that's going to be the little m times g times h. So that's not so bad. And then on this side, we have three different entities. We've got the kinetic energy of our sphere got the kinetic energy of our disk, and then the kinetic energy of our mass. And so that's where we got to do our development. So the sphere's kinetic energy, let's just start with our basics. It's going to be for our sphere. And then um, for our disk, we're going to switch to their letter there. And so that is an IP. That, and then I'm just going to scooch down here. And then we have good old one half MB squared for our mass. So, taking this one step further, uh, the sphere, we're going to uh, pull out that rotational inertia formula for a hollow sphere. That's 2 thirds m r squared. So that's, we're going to start making sure we're using their letters there. So that capital M is the mass of the sphere, as denoted by the, the question. And capital R is the radius of it. And then we have the omega. So we want to get rid of our omegas now. We want to use the relationship between linear and angular. So uh, we can find the omega of a, of a sphere if we know the tangential velocity of the edge. That's the velocity that we're after, right? So that's going to be that velocity divided by the radius of the object that we're dealing with. So I can put in for omega, I can put in uh, that v that we're after. So I'm going to call it vf and divide it by the radius of the sphere. And that has to be squared. So that takes care of that. And then moving on to our next term, I'm underlying in green there. So we can keep that IP, like, and that's actually a tender mercy. We don't have to deal with that. That it makes life easier. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to relate the linear to angular there. And so that final velocity divided by the radius of the pulley, right, which has a different letter. And then that gets squared. And then we have one more term. I'm underlining in blue. And we don't have to do anything with that. And we got to remember what we're doing, right? We're trying to solve for VF. So I've got to collect those terms somehow, pull them out of all that mess, and just try to neaten up. So that's the hard part's over. Uh, the rest of it's just like cleaning up our room. And so um, if I look, I'm going to just rewrite my MGH again. 
left hand side it's pretty easy. I'm going to just bring it out front so I can kind of keep track of it. So I'm just pulling that out, I'm going to underline it, I'm pulling it out of that term, that term, and that term. And so the leftovers are going to go inside my big parentheses here. And I can also do a little bit of simplification as I go. That uh, 2 and that 2 are going to simplify out. And so I'll end up with uh, 1 third, Let's switch back the red there, 1 third big M R squared. And uh-oh. Uh-oh, didn't see this opportunity. See that R gets squared there, right? And so uh, that's going to end up canceling out. You probably saw that coming. And now I've got this term right here that I'm dealing with. And the half stays there. And the IP stays there. And the R stays downstairs. So that's a little sloppy. I didn't plan that out very well, but we'll clean it up on the next step. So that's one half IP, and then R squared is in the denominator. And then I just simply have... Uh, one half M. And then I have my big parenthesis closure there. And so I just need to try to neaten it up a little bit more. And, uh, you know, my goal is to solve for my VF, right? So I'm going to uh, plan on dividing this whole parenthetical term that I'm under underlining in the black ink here. That's going to get put underneath that MGH on the left hand side of the equation. So my, maybe my second to last step here, I have VF squared all by its lonesome. I've got MGH upstairs. <clears throat> and then underneath here, let's see, this, I'm going to circle in green what I'm talking about. So I end up just with M divided by 3. So I'm just going to write capital M divided by 3. And then uh, this one, I'm circling in green, my 2 comes down with my R squared. So that term downstairs will look like IP over 2R squared. And then lastly, I've got my, I'm just going to put uh, little m over 2. And in case you're wondering, how do you tell your little m's from your big m's? Um, I don't have little legs, little feet on my little m, but I do on my big m. Okay, very exciting stuff. And uh, so, you know, last step, this is a little being a little lazy, but I can take the square root of both sides, right? And that has the effect of making that go away, okay? And that's it. It doesn't get any prettier than that. I don't think there's much else I can do to simplify that. So that's where we stop it. And thanks for tuning in.